Here we have it, all of my red art supplies that I meticulously picked off of their shelves and out of their individual containers. But let's not focus on the negative. <laughs> hmm. Today, we're going to be drawing something using every single red art supply that I own. So, let's get to it. If you've seen one of my previous videos where I draw with um, only one color in all of my art supplies, that was a terrible way to say that, but... Uh... <laughs> you know the drill. On the left, I have all of the red art supplies that I have yet to use, and as I use them, I will move them to the right side of the screen so you can see that I indeed do use every single red art supply that I own. When using a bunch of different art supplies, it's always important to swatch them out, especially when all their colors are so similar, or when they're all one color. But you'll notice when you swatch them out that even though all these colors are all one color, they don't all look the same. Some have cooler tones, some have warmer tones, some are lighter, some are darker, some are opaque, some are transparent. So swatch your art supplies, folks. I will have all the supplies that I use today linked in the description below, or at least mentioned, um, including the paper. But the first art supply that I'll be using today is this scarlet red cola race colored pencil because we're sketching out an idea right and um i have a lot of art supplies but not a lot of them are erasable in fact only one of them is erasable the cola race pencil which is why i'm using it <laughs> yay explanations are fun right so the color race pencil is cool because it has an eraser and it's a colored pencil and you can erase it so it's basically a pencil but it's colored so that's fun. Now, when I do these challenges where I use a single color, um, I like to come up with an idea that makes me think of that color or come up with an idea that that color makes me think of would be a better way to say that. So for this one, I kept thinking, what's red? And I kept seeing a stop sign. And <laughs> so I did a bunch of thumbnails and I tried to come up with other red things but it just really wasn't clicking. And I remember like, oh, you know, the fiery redhead stereotype kind of thing. And I saw the stop sign and I thought, why don't I play around with that idea just a little bit here? And I decided to draw basically, I don't know if any of you have ever played that game, Jet Set Radio Future, but it used to be one of my favorite games. And the premise is that it's a group of teenagers, you know, who are, actually some of them might have even been adults, but anyway, they're graffiti artists and they spray graffiti all over town and you know, you have to spray a bunch of graffiti everywhere and then there's like rival gangs and they spray over your graffiti and then you have to go around and spray over their graffiti, which is sprayed over your graffiti. And it's just, you know, it's just a lot of that. Anyway, I was thinking of that and I wanted to draw maybe a character running a stop sign. So maybe this character doesn't really follow the rules. And when I started thinking about that, I thought, ooh, maybe they just sprayed some graffiti and they're running from the cops. So I, I drew someone pole vaulting, basically. Not pole vaulting. What is, is that what it's called? In gymnastics? We, no. It's just the vault. <laughs> okay, so I drew a girl vaulting over a stop sign that's kind of like bent. So maybe she's from a side of town that isn't as well kept so a sign got hit by a car maybe three years ago and it's still bent over like that and she's just hopping it so i just i liked the mental idea of a girl or a character it doesn't have to be a girl a character jumping over a stop sign so ignoring the rules basically and you know that's that's where the idea came from so <laughs> everything was basically spawned off of that and even though i have a terrible way of explaining it i feel like i knew what i was doing when i was doing it and so yeah then i moved on to this copic marker or is it copic it's the color r29 or lipstick red but when i swatched it out i thought it looked like the exact color of a stop sign so i decided to go to the stop sign with it now the letters, the S, T, O, and the P, which spell the words stop, I didn't want to be red and I didn't even want it to be pink. Like I wanted it solid white. So I had to be very careful not to draw over the letters because obviously I'm only using red art supplies and I don't have a white art supply. So I'm gonna have to like use the color of the paper for that. So that was what I was thinking about when I was coloring that in with the Copic marker. Next up, I used the Goldfeber Aqua Faber-Castell watercolor pencil. I'm kind of fond of the way I used this. I basically just traced over the sketched lines that I had made with the Cola Race pencil. And then I went in with a wet brush and just stayed within those lines and filled in the area that would make up the metal part of the stop sign. And I really like the way that looked and it's much lighter. So I'm using a red color, but I'm getting a very light tone because I'm adding so much water to it. And that's how I'm going to be able to um, hopefully add some contrast to this piece. 
And since I liked the way that was looking so much, I decided to add in the brick texture with this same pencil. Um, so it's a watercolor pencil, but I'm drawing in all of the shapes of the brick. That would be the background. And then when I have all those shapes in, I go in with, with the paintbrush that has water on it and I'm filling in all of the spaces between the brick to kind of fill it in with like the grout, you know, the cement stuff. And I really like the way that it looks because it's not like super filled in with color. It's just sort of like, blurring the edges a little bit and I think it really really helped with what I was going for so I like that and I've never used watercolor pencils like that before so you learn something new every day <laughs> then I used this Dr. PH Martin's Bombay India ink in the color bright red and I love these India inks just the color and the pigment that you get and I decided to use this for the base layer of her red hair I also colored in a couple of the bricks in the background and some of the graffiti. Um, that's going to be something that you'll notice <laughs> that I'll keep doing. I like using a bunch of different red art supplies to color in the bricks. That way each of the bricks is kind of like a different color and it adds more texture to the background and the bricks don't seem like they're all just the exact same red color. Then I used my other um, Dr. PH Martin India ink, this time in the color Just Red. It's actually not called Just Red, it's red. <laughs> and this is a much more potent, um, like vibrant red color. And I used this to color in some more of the graffiti as well as her um, shirt. I wanted to give her that like raglan baseball tee kind of shirt texture, which I always wanted when I was younger. <sighs> They're my favorite. Anyway, I also colored in her boots with that same um, red color. And I really, really like that. It's almost the same color as the lipstick red Copic, um, but it's a little bit pinker. Do you see that? Look at us, we're getting so like, I was gonna say critical, but I, wa I want it to mean like a cri an art critic. Is there like an adjective for that? But look at us, we're like learning our colors. We're seeing the difference between a bunch of different red colors. It's pretty cool. So next up, I used this watercolor right there. <laughs> and I'd tell you what color it is, but I, I, I don't really know. I know it's the St. Petersburg White Knights watercolor set. And I took these two reddish colors out of there, but I didn't label them. So I'm not entirely sure which ones they are. If we have any watercolor experts or people with a really good eye, let me know which color you think this is. Is it Carmine or Matter Lake Red Light? Because I need to put them away and I really don't know which spot to put them in. <laughs> Leave your guesses in the comments below. There'll be a prize. There won't be a prize. Wait, you, do you want a prize? Wait, there's no right answer, but I'll give you all the prize. You want all the prize? Okay, how about some liner? And I'll give you a coloring page, a free coloring page. Check the link in the description, see if I actually did it. Next up, we used this ultra fine Sharpie and I added some lines to a few of the elements like the stop sign and that can of paint. And apparently that's it. This is the Derwent drawing pencil in the color Ruby Earth. And I really, really like the color of this pencil because it's red, but it's like so dark red that it's almost brown. And I was able to use this to add some um, more contrast in the colors. Like right now I'm using, you know, red, obviously, but they're all very similar in tone. Like there aren't really a whole lot of light colors and there aren't really a whole lot of dark colors, but with this pencil, I get to go closer to the darker end of the spectrum and I can use that to outline some things and give more contrast or more attention to the elements that I want to be standing out in this illustration. In particularly like the graffiti and I also added a pretty dark, heavy shadow behind the main character because I wanted all of those things to really stand out. Ooh, I'm excited about this one. This is the Copic marker in the color R21 or Sardonyx. And I used this and blended it out to like the white color for the graffiti and it added this really, really cool I'd call it like graffiti effect because it literally looks like some of the graffiti um, that I was looking up for reference and the way that the color fades out to another color and adds like that gradient. This is also one of the lightest red colors that I own. So I used it to add a little bit of blush and shading to her skin. Moving on to my Ohuhu marker collection. This is the color 15. I wish Ohuhu still put color names on their markers. Numeral names just bore me, but <laughs> I used this to outline the character kind of as a liner, but obviously a lot thicker because my Ohuhu markers don't have a brush tip. There's a chisel nib on one end and a bullet nib on the other. And I also added some elements to the graffiti because I realized this color looked exactly like the watercolor that I'd used to color in the graffiti that says red. Then I used this Crayola crayon in the color, you guessed it. Red. Now, whenever I do one of these all color challenges, the crayon is the one that I just wish that I've thrown them away by now because they just don't really go well with whatever I'm trying to draw. But with this one, 
I thought that texture would come in handy since I'm drawing a brick background and bricks are bumpy like the crayon texture. So I tried to use that to color in some of the bricks, but again, realized that I really don't like Crayola crayons. So I moved on to these Ohu fine liners. These don't have any color names either, but I used them both to do basically the same thing since their colors are so very similar. I just made sure that I switched them out halfway through. <laughs> then I used the other watercolor again. Don't know what color it was. Leave your guesses in the comments, please. I'm depending on you. <laughs> anyway, I used this to add like a really distant dark shadow behind the characters because I felt like the stop sign and the girl were really still blending in with that background and I wasn't a huge fan of that happening. So I used this color to add in that shadow and at first it was like way too dark so then I tried to lighten it up with um, paper towel but it had already dried pretty fast. I think it's because I'm using such thick absorbent paper but I still really like the effect. It's a much pinker color than I was expecting. Neither of my swatches for either Carmine or Matter Lake Red Deep Light whatever <laughs> look like that which again is adding to this conundrum. One of my newer art supplies in my collection, the Crayola Signature Brush Markers. Um, I really like the pigment of these and the brush tip, obviously. <laughs> I used this to color in her shorts, which I can only describe this color as like fire engine red. It's just gorgeous, I love it. Oh, and I also colored in the hat. And I added some like details to the graffiti and colored in a couple bricks. <laughs> then I used this red Crayola colored pencil to color in a couple bricks and that was it. <laughs> This is the Ahu acrylic paint marker, and I think it's a really underrated art supply. I really like it. I use it to decorate like wrapping paper and presents and stuff, um, but it's just a very opaque paint shoved inside a marker, and then you apply it with a little foam nib. It's like great. I love it. This is the manuscript Cali Creative dual tip pen thing. I don't know. It's a chisel on one end and a fine point on the other, and Honestly, the art supplies were starting to feel a little redundant here, <laughs> but I managed to use the uh, chisel nib to add little like shadows under some of the bricks. Like some of them are like poking through a little farther, you know? And then I actually slipped it over and used the fine point to add texture to some of these bricks. You know, that texture I was looking for from the crayon, but it didn't really work. <laughs> so I added just a bunch of little polka dots here and there on the bricks. And I really like the way that looks now. This is the Copic marker in the color R24 or Peron. How can you say the word Peron without like sounding snobbish? <laughs> anyway, I used this to color in a couple bricks and then fill in that whole bottom section of the like the cement that I mentioned earlier. I thought the drawing felt a little top heavy and then filling in that little section really helped even it out a bit. Next up, these are two of my red Art and Fly markers. One's the color R5 and one is the color R2. D2, nice to meet you. That's not funny. I used the darker one, R2, to um, add to that shadow behind the character because I'm constantly battling myself trying to get her to stand out from the background. Um, so yeah, continuing that battle with that marker. And I also added graffiti to the back of the round, the background. But I realized I drew the power logo upside down and slanted and it just looked like the letter Q. And this isn't Sesame Street, so... <laughs> I had to finagle that one around trying to get it to look a little better. I had to get out my trusty white gel pen and try to like color in little sections to make it look like brick again and like color over my mistake. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so this is the crink marker in like a chubby, super chubby paint marker <laughs> is what I like to call it. And a lot of you guys mentioned last time I used one of these markers that these are actually used by like actual graffiti artists. It's like their go-to marker. I just decided to fix the power graffiti mark and then add another one because I mean I needed to add a smiley face graffiti like background obviously wasn't busy enough but I just really couldn't find a way to use this marker to really show its potential so I moved down to the next art supply <laughs> which happened to be this red chocola marker now these are really cool because they're actually meant for like dry erase marker boards and like you know that's their function. <laughs> but they have a bit of a chalky texture to them and they're very opaque. So you can actually use them in like your mixed media drawings and draw over mistakes. Or also I drew over like the power graffiti logo because this color is lighter than like the crank. So it actually kind of added this two-tone texture. My 24th and 25th art supply of the drawing are these two Ohu alcohol-based markers. Um, and I used mostly the bullet nib for these two, like adding some detail to the graffiti. I, I really like the way adding like that really weird thin line to the top of the word cool even though it looks like it says cool anyway 
<laughs> and I added some like darker shading to like the character and still trying to make her stand out more, but I don't really fix that till the very end. So stay tuned. <laughs> oh, and then I used 14 to add some texture to that bottom section of the drawing, just like dots and strokes, just make it look less clean. Next up, I'm not entirely sure where this art supply came from, but it's a magic marker in the color blood red. And this inspired me. I added little like bruises and like scrapes on her knees, you know? <laughs> She's a little scrapper, you know? She likes to defend herself, so it's gonna result in probably a couple bruises and scraped knees. And she doesn't really have a mommy to give her a kissy and a band-aid, so <laughs> they're just out there in the open, ready to get infected. Then I used an art supply I'm sure you all are pretty familiar with, a uh, Crayola marker in the color red. <laughs> and I just used this to add little details here and there. This is the Pigma brush. Um, it's kind of like a micron, but it's got a brush nib. Yeah, I know. I never would have believed it. But it's in the color red, so I have to use it. <laughs> and I use this to add some more details to like her hair, add a little bit of like curly bits and other like little details here and there. Oh, this thing's cool. This is the Stabilo Carbothello pencil. It's kind of like drawing with like a, ch like charcoal. Like it feels like you're drawing in sand, but it's like leaving pigment on the paper because you're obviously drawing on paper. <laughs> but it's super pigmented and opaque and I just, I really like using it. And it's on the darker side of the red spectrum so I can use it to fix some mistakes like make the word power really stand out or like the rest of the graffiti. You know, those parts that are like a little blarby, now they're like, you know, coming into focus. This is one of the only Faber-Castell polychromos that I own, so better get to using it. This one's also on the darker side of the red spectrum, so <laughs> I'm using it to outline some more of that character and trying to really make them pop. And I also used it for like shading the back leg or shading underneath the stop sign because that was looking a little too pink. <laughs> I also used it to kind of like grunge up the stop sign because if it really had been hit by a car, I don't think it would look brand new. Right? This pencil might look kind of boring, but it's actually a metallic colored pencil, so it's got a little bit of a shimmer to the lead when you apply it to paper. And so I kind of tried to use this to shine up like the graffiti, but I really didn't dig it. So I kind of didn't do much with this one. Like instead of coloring a whole lot, I just used it to add a band aid to her knee. <laughs> This is the Artline 220 Superfine <laughs> pen. It's size 0.2, which is probably the smallest red fine liner that I own. So this was really cool for adding like some details to her face. I'd already done her face, so I kind of wish I had waited till now to do that. But you know, <laughs> you live and you learn. I was even able to add like the little dots on a band-aid with this thing. That's, that's how tiny the point is. <laughs> I've got two Ohul Do Tip brush pens here in the color red and I've kind of just used these because I had to <laughs> and it might have been to my detriment. I used one to shade like the knee and like the, the behind leg to kind of throw it farther into the background, but that's probably a bad idea. And then I also added like shadow underneath her bum there. <laughs> this is the Marabou Fine Liner Color Graphics Fine Liner. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and I used this to add um, some more details to like her shoes and other little bits and bobs there trying to um, improve upon the piece and not really being very successful. <laughs> oh, we've made it to the end. It's my final art supply. This is the Holbein Acrylic Gouache in the color Carmine. And I saved this for last because I knew gouache is opaque. So I thought I could use it to like fix mistakes, you know? But all I ended up doing was just adding blobs to like the graffiti and darkening up the little ledge down at the bottom or um, adding some more color to like the one graffiti's outline. I didn't end up really using this one much. And then when I took a step back, I realized this piece was really looking like a big red blob. And I guess I should have expected it. I'm only using all red art supplies, but like there wasn't really enough contrast here. And I needed to play with it a little bit more. I needed to fix this. And what this piece was missing was some more light tones. And um, so I decided to make the executive decision <laughs> to cheat a little bit here. The paper's white, so it's not like, oh, so it's, it's fine. But I use this Posca pen and I outline the entire character. Now this isn't very realistic and you probably wouldn't see this IRL, like a girl jumping over a stop sign with the bricks behind her and she has this beautifully perfect white outline around her, but you do see it in illustrations. <laughs> You see it in my illustrations anyway. And I think this really helped pull her out from the background. I do think it made her look a little bit like a sticker, but I'll take sticker over blob any day. So this is my finished result. This is what happens when I use every single one of my red art supplies. 
I actually really like it. I think it's the pose and like the action of it. And I've been really leaning towards drawing things that have like a story behind them. And I've realized that's really what I like. I like drawing characters that are alive and have done something and are gonna go do something, you know? Like they're not just stiff mannequins, okay? <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Like, I think it needs work, obviously. There's always things to improve upon. And I'm glad there is or art would probably get really boring. So <laughs> yay for not being perfect. And yay for kind of sucking. If we were judging it on like the cool scale, I'd probably give it a coo. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you all have the most delicious evening full of waffles. <laughs> Bye!